people will see this interview and there will be a massive amount of people that just don't believe me. And then there'll be a few that go, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Is that what you go by among your friends? Joss, or Jossie, or Jocelyn, or Jew? Jew. Jew. <laughs> I know. J-O-O, -O, not J-E-W. <laughs> yeah, Jossie Jew is my nickname. I love your story, especially because you made this really bold move a few years back where, and people thought you were crazy for it. You left your record label, yeah. gave up $9 million. Yeah. What drove that call? I just didn't like what I was doing. I didn't like the feeling that I was in. When you're in a bit a uh, sticky spot in your life, if you can look at it and go, why am I not happy right now? What parts do I not like? What can I get rid of or what can I keep? And there was a lot of money and fame, which I didn't really enjoy. Um, you didn't enjoy money and fame? No, not so much. What I mean, did you not like about it? I don't like that I have to wake up every morning and everyone's on me all the time. And if I go to the shop to buy a pint of milk, you know, pictures are taken of it. I hate that. I kind of thought to myself, how much do I actually need to do what I love? Because there, it is expensive making an album with orchestras and wonderful musicians on it and having a great mixer. You know, that costs thousands and thousands of pounds to do. It really does. But it's not millions and millions of pounds. So I can make my music that I like and play gigs and people turn up, so I've got like a good balance. There are probably people who would say, well, you could be a bigger star. It's a constant conversation with people that I come across, like mostly managers and agents and people that run record labels and people in the And what do you say to them? You sit there and you try to explain it and you realize that it's falling on deaf ears. I don't think people believe what I'm saying. So you can tell them till you're blue in the face. Like this interview, see, people will see this interview and there will be a massive amount of people that just don't believe me. And then there'll be a few that go, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I would hate that also. Mm -hmm. You know, it just depends what you're like and what you're about. I believe you because to me, it's success on your terms. Right. It's what is success to you. Right. right. And what is success to you? Success is happiness, but that's different for every person. So this is my way of being happy. I get a little bit of everything. It's not everybody's way, so it is hard for mm -hmm. some people to understand. It's not about how much money you have. If that money brings you a huge pain in the backside, it's, it's not happiness and it's not success. At what point in your life did you feel, I am a success, I am successful? Oh, do you know what? Some days I feel like that and some days I don't, even now. I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh, I didn't sing that right or, you know, I did a song the other day in Amsterdam. When I got to singing the song, I ruined it. Oh! <laughs> you feel like you ruined it? Yes, I, I, um, I bet the audience didn't have a clue. Well, I don't know. I think if you knew the song, I think you would know. How long do you let that bother you? Because I know I, it's hard for me sometimes. When I go out, I have yeah. an intention of doing something one way. Yeah. It's hard to shake that. Mm. It can be, it can be a week or two. Sometimes I don't, there are certain things that I've, like little mistakes I've made with, and it's always within the craft that I've chosen. So it's always my singing really, mm -hmm. that's all I really care about. Mm -hmm. So if I make a big mistake and I sing something that is like disrespecting the song, that's the worst thing for me. If you sing the wrong lyric and it's not your song, I feel like I've just disrespected the writer, the artist, I go way too deep on it, when really you just, you mess up the words, get over it. You know, so if I do that, that will stay with me, there's a song, I sang, I sang a wrong note at the beginning of a song. And this was like seven years ago. And you're still thinking about it. Yes! I just can't seem to shake it. It's so annoying. But I'm not as annoyed as I was at the time. <laughs> what is the mantra? What's the thing that goes through Jossie Jew's mind? <laughs> as, as you're trying to say, you're being totally ridiculous. If you get too upset about something, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I do a little bit of the old slap slap and go, don't be ridiculous, it's a song. Yeah. Let's remember what we're doing here. It's a song. What would you be doing if you weren't singing? We're doing a lot of charitable visits on the world tour, so that's sparking a little bit of another part of my mind. The idea of the tour is we play every country in the world, missing out none, and we visit a good person, someone doing something positive in that place, and that usually takes us to a charity. You're doing this on your terms. Right. How do you get there? 
you choose to do that. I mean, most people don't ask, how, how do I get here? Most people ask, how do I get famous? That's really the question. And that is, it's a funny thing. I've gone through a bit of a path. So it's been the traditional get signed by a major label and then choose not, which I don't know how many people really want that. So what do you say to that, that I don't young person like, who wants the major label? Remember why you began. That's it. And then the choices that you make whilst remembering that will be positive and they will go towards um, your desired outcome. So if you begin to make music because you have to do that and it makes you feel whole, um, then that means you'll never be in a position where somebody says, here's a bunch of writers, you're mm -hmm. going to sing this song. That's what, you know, you just be conscious of. Why did you start? And then if you really wanted to be a singer because you just want to make lots of money and have lots of people looking at you, then you'll make, it, you'll make decisions that will take you towards that. And then you'll be happy. What, whatever it is, make sure that it's your happiness, your decision. And don't forget what that beginning thought was. Sometimes, you know, you get pulled off of your path a little bit. What have you done in the moments that you've been pulled off of your path? I remind myself a lot of the time that I have choice. So, for instance, um, I really, 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 really don't like singing to track. Like, it makes me feel sad. It makes me feel like I'm, I'm disrespecting what I, well, music as a whole, really. In Europe, they do a lot of television shows that are to track. You know, people, they ask you and they ask you and you say no, and they ask you again mm -hmm. and you say no. And after the fifth or sixth time, you're like, oh, okay. When I was younger, that happened a few times, and every time I did it, it just made me so upset. And that's why I say, remember why you began. Please don't forget it. Even if they keep asking you, even if it's the 25th time that they are asking you, don't forget why you began and what you're there to do. I think that it's really difficult in that moment where you think that saying no mm. is going to compromise your career. Mm -hmm. It's going to compromise everything that you've worked so hard to accomplish. Mm -hmm. It's stressful. <laughs> it is stressful. When there's everybody around you saying, oh, but if you don't do this, then this is going to happen, and nee, 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 nee. you know, just shh. So you don't believe them or you say, actually, there's something bigger out there. It's doing what I want to do and I will do yeah. it no matter what the outcome is, no matter what the trade-off is. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Let go of the outcome and live in the moment and go with your gut. Um, and you know what? When you make the mistakes, which you will, some of them will be huge and some of them will be tiny. But when you make them, it's you that has made them. So then you can learn. You can only affect your own actions. You can't really affect anybody else. They're going to do whatever they're going to do. Do whatever you can to be positive and good and bright and feel good. And if it's wrong, so you live another day and you don't do it again. You know, you learn. When's your next album coming out? Oh, after the Total World Tour, I'll make one. That'll be about two years, maybe three. If you could go back in time and collaborate with anyone. I'd like to collaborate with Otis Redding. Otis Redding. That would be great. Or Marvin Gaye. Probably Otis Redding there first, because he's got like the crunch in the voice. Whereas Marvin's more smooth. You're 28. Yeah. You got into this industry at age 13 on a mm. reality competition on, on TV. Yay! And then you got signed at age 15. What would you say to your younger self, mm. knowing what you know now? I probably would talk to my younger self about how important the business side of art is. Because it took me a few years too long to find respect for that man. The music and the business. They're both valid and they're both important. So I would probably say to younger Joss, have some respect for people that are trying to help music be heard. Have some respect for the fact that they can do a job that you cannot do. Because the whole time I was in the contract with VMI, I was having that thought process. It was like this fight and it was never gonna get resolved because I just wasn't giving them what they wanted and they weren't giving me what I wanted and it was all this horrible feeling. And then I realized, no, you two want completely different things. So just give it to each other. Because you don't hold any value to it. So they gave me my musical freedom and I gave them their money. Done. Easy. If only I had recognised that earlier, I would have been out a little bit sooner and I wouldn't have had to go through the dramas. But maybe the dramas are important. So maybe I would have just let young Joss just deal with it. <laughs> I love that. Mm. What, what have you learned about business? Play to your strengths. My dad always says that. Play to your strengths. That's important. So if you're not a business mind, 
um, do whatever you're good at and let the business minds do their thing. Your dad is a businessman. Oh yeah, yeah, he's Mr. Businessman. Has he's he taught so you a lot about it. business? He's taught me a lot about um, how important uh, people management is, I think. So, like he says, play to your strengths. When I said to my dad when I was young, I said, I think I want to be a doctor. He said, play to your strengths. <laughs> you know, and my sister said, I want to be a singer. And he said, play to your strengths. You know, so we're very different. She's now a lawyer and I'm a singer. He also taught me um, that you don't have to do anything in any situation ever. That's so important as well, I think, in business and in life. I hate your opinion. And yes, we've all got